Me and Caden with the server. All right, well, hey, Binbush here. I wanted to give you a little preview of what this looks like. Hey, thank you for calling AT&T. This is Dylan Hollingworth speaking. How can I help you today? I just figured since uh, we're going to be separated, we uh, might as well see some of my face. You like this headset? This is when I was a gamer for about three weeks and gave it up. And like these headphones are incredibly like warm. So the audio is great. So what can I say? Um, all right. Uh, to the lesson, I guess. So that's uh, that's what Ben Bush is going to look like for a little while. Um, let's, uh, let's get into this fusion. Right, so hopefully you have this guy downloaded. You got to make an account. Thankfully for education, it is free. If you can't find it, you know you should have already contacted me and said, "Bush, I'm having a problem finding it." But um, he'll be happy to help you with that. And you know, if you start this assignment late, no big deal because um, it's online. You can access it whenever you want to. Open this cat up. There's a lot of good features, and like this is no joke. Like the best time to be working on this software. Um, it's free. It's hyper mobile. It's collaborative. It has lots of functionality. Um, not 100 sure how we're going to spend the rest of the semester, but for the next couple weeks, hanging out in Fusion, the timing couldn't be more perfect. Um, lots of features we can go through, right? Um, it does practically everything. Not everything. It is largely the same format as SolidWorks. It's a solid modeler. It has also the ability to do surfaces, a little bonus. Like there's a lot of things just baked into this software, which makes it like y'all really letting students use this for free. You kill them, they smalls. Um, sheet metal. I've never played with this, but it seems like a good time to operate with it. And then in terms of tools, you get lots of inspection um, that you would with your SolidWorks. So I'm a I'm a pretty big fan of it, especially because I can use it on Mac. I can use it on PC. And that's just like the design tab right there's a rendering tab that's also available there's animation I've never actually played with this animation once again could be a good time to play with it simulation this one's pretty cool you have to do a, an add-on for SOLIDWORKS I believe but we'll play around one day with like just stress testing because it's pretty stinking cool to see how our designs might deform and then probably my most favorite is favorites is a manufacturer and my current plans is once we create some content in Fusion, we're going to turn my garage into a little maker lab. We'll have four people over at a time, and I'll show you how to use these machines. So how to 3D print, how to CNC route. So I'm really excited because, like I think I've told you all before, computers, even though I'm good at them and I like them, I don't love them. I need to get outside of the computer. So this whole manufacturing thing let me do some... Uh, computer numerically controlled approaches makes me a very happy kiddo um, today we're in the design tab I guess it's kind of a also a tab up here but we're gonna be in the create form it's a subset of it um, think of it like when we were in rhinoceros we kind of we could use meshes so we could operate on meshes but you couldn't operate on meshes and nerves at the same time so when we're in this um, sub D or T spline world we can use its buttons but you can't go back and do like a solid extrusion or make a surface function um, you can do that later but when you're in it you gotta work on it when you're outside of it you gotta work outside of it quick check on the video All right, still good the one thing I, I do want you to be aware of is like the buttons are different and yes the buttons are different but there's a really sweet uh, personalization within the preferences you can make that makes me a lot happier um, on the default version, let me go back to default, which is Fusion, apply. Um, if you like this style, you know, go ahead with it. I don't mind. I'm going to make a quick box just for um, something to, to orbit around. All right, so right now we're in our preferences, pan, orbit, zoom. So zoom in, zoom out, very basic, using your middle mouse button. This right click, which I'm used to doing some type of functionality, it gives you access to the quick menu. I, I'm never get used to that. Um, if I want to pan, I depress the middle mouse button. But typically when I'm pressing the middle mouse button, I want to orbit around. Um, two ways to orbit in the default fusion version, right? You can grab the square up top. If you ever get lost, go back home. It takes you to this isometric. 
The other way that I do is a little bit faster. Hold down shift and then depress your mouse button. If you don't have a mouse, it's not impossible, but it does make working on uh, CAD considerably more difficult. Um, if you need a mouse, contact me. We'll see if we can get that thing figured out, but you're grown adults. Either you can make the trackpad work in the short term or, you know, borrow a mouse from a friend. Sanitize it really well, though. Um, I prefer, right, preferences. I'm going to go back up here. This pan, zoom, and orbit. I'm going to use a SOLIDWORKS because it lets me orbit, and I do a lot of orbiting, especially with making the, these sculpting functions. Apply. Okay. Difference now that I'm in SOLIDWORKS, when I depress the middle mouse button, it orbits. I'm orbiting a lot more. If I do shift, actually shift doesn't do much on that one. So how would I pan now? I don't really pan that much in this program. I mean, I could grab that button and you know physically pan, but stop it. Okay, great. Go back home. Cancel. So now I'm in this kind of SOLIDWORKS. Orbiting is more what I do, so that's why I want it kind of tagged to that middle mouse button. Yo, it's time to start. Let me get rid of this body. Delete. Adjust headphone slightly. Nice. Um, largely, the workflow is the, the same, right? You can see things getting built. You can see your timeline here. Reading through these. Or talk about rendering animation. We'll play with some of those, especially the simulation and manufacturing later. Today we're in the creation of form, so design tab, create form. So now we're in the create form. Um, if you want to see your planes, you know, here they are, very similar to the old SOLIDWORKS. Um, some people call it T-splines, it's kind of an old name for it. Um, i trying to think why I was... They have star joints, I don't know if I'll get to that, that in this lesson, but like you have these forms, like here's some freebies. Couple more freebies down here, right? It's a box, yes, but it's not just a normal box. It's a squishy box. We'll call this a star joint. You can have up to five coming out of here. Crazy, fun stuff. So if I wanna make organic, soft feeling forms, this is the program that I'm, go I'm going for. You do lose a bit of control. I'll show you how to get get it back later but it's most of them making things that are squishy and soft and have like amazing amounts of continuity if we were in Rhino right now and in order to make this surface happen with continuity between three surfaces that's a pretty complex curved network here it just doesn't mind doing it at all it's brilliant Ooh, it's like a caterpillar I'm like ugh, rumples um, I guess I could talk about this while we're here you remember like when we were doing curves, and this is all the way back at the beginning of uh, the semester, if you want a tighter curve, you need more control points. So if I did three dots, dot, 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 it makes a pretty soft curve. But if I did five points, one, two, three, four, five, and made a curve, that curve's gonna be sharper. Not like 90 degrees, but it's a sharper edge. Same thing happens in this case. Uh, he doesn't like that many faces. Um, let me give you a little rotation. But you'll see how this edge gets tightened up the more lines there is. There's other ways to do that, but that's a very simple way to think about it. Um, the closer your points are together, in this case the closer the lines are together, the more of a harder, sharper, never totally sharp edge you're going to have. Alright, so that's our box. What other freebies do we have? Planes, not really touch a lot on planes. Cylinder, cylinders are fantastic. Difference is you got to add a top to them later. Let's see. I'm going to increase this maybe to 12. Not 128, please. And this is going to make a big difference depending on what you want to do with this surface. Um, symmetry. I'm not going to cover symmetry. We'll, we'll tell it lightly today, but symmetry is not that big of a deal. Um, the cool thing, or the coolest thing, is in the other programs, if I have a surface, I can typically control the edge of the surface just fine but controlling the spaces within I mean you can you can turn your control points on if you're in Rhino and style works a little bit more complicated you got to mess with your curves but this one it's almost like I'm playing with clay we do that through the extrude function 
you pick the surface that you want to mess with, right? And I can add like clay to it. I can add, give me another face on it, right? I can keep on pulling, add a face to it. So it is kind of like clay in the fact that I can add more content and pull. You can also scale these things. The way you're going to do it is you need to modify, similar to the dongle you had in Rhinoceros, where I can scale it. I can move it. I can rotate you. Right, so pretty you know, easy functionality that's not too far in from you. Let me get away from this thing. I definitely want to show you quad ball. We're going to go from a, eh, we're not going to quad ball, but man, these spheres, I don't like the noises up all the spheres, kind of precursor. Quad ball, probably my favorite. It is like a, let me get you a little bit bigger. It's a sphere, but it's also like a square. It's a squircle, perhaps, you know. These things are my favorite things to play with um, when I just get, I guess, bored or if I want to play around with 3D models. I typically start one of these cats because it's super fun. Let's see. I'm picking on a vertex. I'm going to push that vertex down. Right? That looks like it's um, similar to something you might see in old rhinoceros. It's okay. We can clean it up later. Kid's doing uh, art while I'm doing lessons. Um, bridge. Bridge is so cool. Right? Tell me this wouldn't take forever in another program. Ooh, my starting points are all jacked up. I need these guys to be going the same direction. It's kind of like the whole seam equation. There we go. All right, going the same direction. Look at that. Look how smooth. Um, not playing a lot with bridge today, but man, it's a fun function. I do like it a lot, even though like, I could soften that up if I really wanted to. Tauruses, great fun. Kind of just draw, drawing on the wall right now. Keep that guy a bit closer. I don't want that. Ooh, art. All right, cool. Let's make sure I got rid of the other body. This one, I'm going to use the um, bridge in the other case. Come on, where are you, bridge? That surface, that surface, going the same starting point, same direction, hit it up. Boom. All right, freaking dark magic. Look at, here we go, star joint, one, two, three, four, five. That is a hard piece of geometry to make in something else. I mean, I have to do, I, I, I can't imagine doing that in surfaces. That would just take the life out of me. Um, what's another uh, another fun thing? Yes, I could do it in symmetry. I'm going to go the long route today just because I'm showing off. And For me, I consider sculpt or T-splines or sub-D like playground to me. Uh, extrude. Okay. And then I'm going to modify. Right, I'm just being stupid. 4-bit twist. Right, we're getting pretty fun stuff pretty quick. So I like playing with quad balls, I like playing with Tauruses, delete, go home. I got it kind of cattywampus, didn't I? Good southern word for you, cattywampus. Um, piping, great one. We'll play there on that later. Faces are what we're going to use today. That's a very simple way to start. I can say it's more accurate than just coming from a blob. Yes, you can extrude, evolve, sweep, and loft. We'll touch on these later. Great fun. Cover those. Modify. We do need some content so I can modify a little bit. We'll put another box out. All right, basic dollop of three-dimensional surfacing. Um, edit form, showed you a little bit earlier. It's not extruding, it's not adding material, but it does allow you to pull on that one surface. Very cool. While we're talking about pulling on surfaces, there's more than one thing you can pull on. I can pull on the entire element, whatever I select which is good. I can pull on an existing face, rotate existing face. Look how cool that is. Um, I can grab a single line if I wish, right? Pull from a line. I want to go up in an angle. Give me a rotation up and over, right? That's cool. And you can even pull on vertexes, right? So man, just a fun playground of gooiness. I love it. 
What else can I show you? <laughs> yeah, we'll keep it. That's really fun. Um, insert edge, like I said earlier, if you want a sharper curve or you want more control over a specific part of uh, a teeth spline surface, you got to say, all right, you got to give me a zone. In what zone do you want to add another edge? All right, and then I can move that edge. We'll move it to this corner. And you see that guy got a little bit sharper. Um, very similar insert point because these lines are derived by points. All right, adding more geometry gives me more detail. It's getting a little ugly. Back it off. Um, merge edge, I would call that similar to bridging. We'll cover that more later. Filling hole, if you got a hole, fill it. Brilliant. Um, weld vertexes. This is still a new one to me. If I had two edges that weren't really matching up nicely, you can pull those together. Crazy amount of geometry. Typically, you want more data, but if I need to simplify, I could weld vertexes. Cancel that. Creases. Be very uh, gentle with these. In most cases, I'll insert an edge if I want a softer edge, but if it needs to be like crisp, hard, and you have like no leniency, it's kind of going to be rare in the manufactured world. Let's see if it'll fight me on this one. All right now, that's a harder edge. I'm going to do this again over here, as you can see, the change is a bit better. Give me a crease there. All right, if you need a a harder edge it'll give you that that hardness a lot of times I won't like it's not the goal of my design criteria undo undo anything else that's modified we need to talk about having used smooth a lot having used pull a lot thicken great we'll use on that one uh, another time symmetry pretty basic if you've done symmetry in any other programs it's similar but saves you a lot of time now this is gonna mess with your mind. This is a kind of visualization of a mesh. Um, the computer doesn't, I see this, but the computer doesn't see this. This is what it sees. Give me everybody, everybody please. Stop, you being stupid. Display mode. That's what it sees. This is what the computer sees right now. Just a couple of meshes that have the edges joined. This is a cool view because you can see both at the same time. And then we have the view that everyone likes to look at, the smooth and soft version of it. Cancel. You have the ability to construct any plane you want to and build on it. Right now we're stuck with one object, so that's okay. You can measure. You can insert uh, images. So surface plane, picture frame. All right, so quick introduction is already covered. Let me go and check out my notes. All right, today we're making a children's hammer. Um, I didn't have any online resources for this one, so I just pulled out my old school ID skills. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but you know, bear with me. I sped it up too, about three three times. So children's hammer, I didn't want to do that. I wanted something more softy, more bubbly. So just kind of starting the sketch. So just sketching out, get it. I want it more of a curvy feel. It definitely fits into what the T splines or the sub D works. Now this part's pretty important because I can't start with a bubbly structure. I'm starting with flat planes, and then I'm going to extrude them or thicken them into a curved surface. So what I'm doing, I'm taking my very curvy volumetric form, and I'm gonna build it out in sections, kind of like a low poly count. And then, like if you're looking at a hammer, hammers like to split at the very end. So this is me kind of detailing an extra spot. I could make it as one form. I'll show you where that gets a little problematic. Um, I'm gonna make it in two goes because I know I want that back part to be split. So going here, I'm like, ah, I gotta fix that angle. So generally, that's the shape that we're going for. I got that sketch and I saved it off as an image. So I'll show you how to insert that image. I need to upload that into the Microsoft Teams. Somebody remind me so I don't forget and get reprimanded by y'all later. Delete. All right, let's get that image of the kind of children's hammer imported. So insert canvas is what they call it here. You gotta insert it from your computer so I have that downloaded. Um, comes in pretty small. My suggestion is scale that thing by 15. 
I think roughly it gives you 150 millimeters tall, six inches tall, something around um, that ballpark. I am going to draw over this, so I'm going to turn the opacity down. That way I can still see my drawing, but it's not going to be annoying. Of course, I can come over here in a little bit and turn it off, but I'll we'll drop it down to like maybe 20, 20 opacity. All right, it'll hang out with this for a little while, but then uh, we'll get rid of it. So we'll worry about going from existing shapes later. I really don't use planes, and part of the reason is I'm going to make my own custom plane by using the face. So face, what plane do you want to create a face on? The same one that I have my sketch, and I'll front it. And then we're ready to start this whole drawing sequence. Eh, you know, sketch isn't perfect, but I can modify things as I go. But the theme that I had earlier is going to be pretty consistent. I'm going to make a, a face, and then I'm going to attach this other face to the bottom of it. Click, click. We'll make this one the straight one. And then we'll taper it back in. Now this is where it gets weird, right? I've got a branch off to the left and I've got a branch off to the right. We'll keep it straight. There we go. This one's going to taper down a notch. I'm already a little bit concerned that I might be doing too much. I do want it to be bubbly, and the more information I throw into, the more clicks, the more geometry, the more exact and less bubbly it's going to be. So I might come back and edit some of this stuff later. All right, hammerhead. Now I'm going to do this the wrong way, and then come back and do it the right way. I talk about this part being split. There is two ways to do it. There is an easy approach, and there is a more frustrating approach. Um, it's almost like I'm going to make, make my life a little bit harder in the front to make it easier later on. All right, so basic structure all thrown out. Man, that is ugly. I can come back and edit in a second. All right, we're done with that. And it already kind of flattens this out, or it curves it out into... Um, what it would consider a T-spawn. So even though it's flat, it's a T-spawn surface. Yes, we do need to add surfaces to it, but I'm going to go back in here and edit a little bit while... What I'm wanting to do is delete some of these things, cancel... I don't mind being boxed. I just I've I have too many faces on this already. I want to get rid of like two here, and I want to size that up a little bit. I can make it that whole rigid thing again. Let's see if you let me modify this. Messing with a the vertex. There we go. Clicking on a point, dragging it down. Clicking on multiple points, dragging them. All right, this feels. Uh, that feels a bit better. That's going to break it. There we go. Now what I can do is I can remove these later. I just got to use a function. This still feels kind of weird. I'm going to leave it. We're still kind of stylistically working through it. Um, but right now it's it's flat. It's not very curvy other than when I go and change the functions. All right, it started to look more kids friendly. Two options. If I want to add a thickness to this, right, we saw that we could have a, a thickened function, right, pulling this up and down, right, so there's a thickness. Except it didn't go T spawns on me. Let me try that again. Thickness, I don't want, I want a, a soft thickness. There we go, right? That's one way to, to approach doing this. The one I'm gonna show you today is an extrude, right? So we're gonna extrude actually everybody, if it would be so kind. Deselect, reselect, 
All right, I don't mind using the shift. All right, everybody's selected. A couple of reasons. I'm going to use symmetry, or I think I'm going to use symmetry. All right, so now I control both sides simultaneously. I've got a center line, which is going to work pretty well because I do plan to... Yep, we're watching movies. All right, getting there. Got an extrusion here. What's nice, I think the best thing about it is I have this center line here. And now I can edit. I could split. But the reason why I did that detail in the drawing is for this reason exactly. I'm going to go ahead and hide my canvases. I don't need it anymore. Is I need to divide this. And while it is possible to divide, it's going to take more work. Um, what I would have to do is subdivide, unless somebody's like way smarter. Let me do a little repeat subdivide. And for you and you, another subdivide. Right. Man, I still got to do more. I got to just do this one big chunk. What does it save some time? Line, 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 line. Everybody. Repeat subdivide. What I could do is come in here, delete the faces that I don't want, right? It's starting to look more hammer esque. And then. Merge edge, I think could work. Group one to group two. It's not like that's going to be problematic there. So the thing I know I could do is let's change this back into, like, don't y'all do this. This is like kind of the wrong way to do it, but I want to show you that it can be done. I'll go back to my mesh mode. I mean, I can do this. I can make, yep, yep, yep. Kind of a patchwork here. Right, I could start building these back in and go okay and then you know it it would fix it. It's just pretty time consuming. Right, you can see how that one's starting to be more rounded again. But knowing that I do want this split later on changes how I'm gonna start constructing part of my hammer. Sorry, I need to I need not to freak out. I started drawing this from the other side. I guess it doesn't matter. Give me back to this is as far back as I can go. That's okay with me. Oop. Bring it back, bring it back, bring it back. All right, this lets me uh, give the ability to right some wrongs. Turn, turn. All right, we are in the kind of the wrong view. I don't want to I don't want to sketch sketch. What I want to do is edit this drawing or edit this um this arrangement of faces. Give me a splay mode of Sharpies. Okay. More faces. It's okay. One second. Let me deal with the um, the audio issue. All right. It's being taken care of. Yes, I do want to edit the form. Can I add more faces? I feel I'm a little lost here. Yeah? No? Still the unable to click stuff? Y'all know how it is. I don't want to convert. I just want to edit what's going on here. Edit form. Okay. Give me a new face. On that plane. All right. Cool. Just had to go back and give it more information. All good. All right. Backside didn't like how it curved up. I do want it to taper some. And a little tail. All right. Bob made the same mistake. So. Because I know these are going to be split, yes, you could do the version that I just showed you, but because I can, I know I have the ability to extrude off of different faces. We're going to make like these the tail, um, the little split later on. So I'm delete, delete. I'll make that later on in two versions instead of having to create and then undo. All right, so we finished our form. I'm going to extrude it again. 
I need to be in this in this world. Extrude. Um, where'd you go, guys? Hmm. Well, I guess I edit that out. Kind of seems like I'm back to where I was. Face mode, yes. You know what plane that I'm on. All right, guess I lost it. Not a big deal. Taper. Straight. Taper. You know, you can think of this as a um, mistake or an opportunity to get it right the second time. I will choose the number two. All right, like I said earlier, I plan on fixing this later. And keep in mind, like, I'm clicking back to the same points. If I went, like, kind of halfway, it's going to kind of tear the mesh or tear the, the sub-D, the T-spline, the sculpt. There we go. All right, so back to what I'm wanting. Let's add an extrusion to everybody, to be honest. You too, buddy. Oop. Cancel. Select everybody. By everybody, I mean everybody. Extrusion. How dare you. I just want everybody, that's all. All right, everybody selected. All right, I want to go two sides, so symmetric works for me. Two schools of thought, either I can go to thickness and push down or thinness and fill back up. We'll go with that approach, go to the thinner version. And I'll go, all right, so we have a T-spline surface, all bubbly and cute and great. I'm going to, let's work on the handle first. Pretty simple stuff to work on the handle. Select like these two faces, modify to pull them, right? I want more localized control, so I'll grab a, uh, a line, pull that line, say, oh, Ben, uh, you're kind of only do one side. You know what? You're exactly right. Cancel, undo, all that stuff. Two approaches. The longer approach is like select like, both at the same time. I can scale them away from each other. Let me see, where's my scaling here, right? I can do that. Or, because I know it's going to be a symmetrical object, here we go. I'm going to use symmetry. Um, for this guy, it's going to make everyone happy. So, mirror internal. Pretty simple. you got to select face one is a mirror object for face two. So, everything along this green axis is mirrored left and right. Saves you time. Not that big of a headache. So, now when I just easily move one... I get the reaction from the, the it's uh, it's counterpart. Right, want to get a nice bubbly handle for little kid, kid hands. Right, um, I want to make this thinner. So let me get back to a face. One, I can push that in, make the neck thinner. I can grab opposite sides. This is where I'm scaling, right? Pulling that in. How are we looking? This is why the orbit's so nice. All right, tapering in nicely. Um, we'll save the, the tail for the very end. I want this transition here to be sharper, not like super sharp, but this is where your insert edge comes in handy. I want a vertical edge right in the middle. That works. I'll go okay. You see how it already kind of pulls in? Um, it has, I, I could do it the entire way around. Maybe I should do the entire way around. But this section is going to affect everything around it. Let's see. What I want to do is grab some lines here. Right? The closer these are together, the sharper 
edge you're going to have, right? That looks terrible, but that is how it works in theory. Alright. Not a huge fan of like, how that guy's working out. So I'll come back. Add another insert edge. This time we'll play a little bit more friendlier. Two, three. All right, so that gives me an edge all the way around. And this way, I'm going to move this around with a modify. Come here, give me some lines. Oh, I'm, I'm scaling. Okay, my bad. I just wanted to move, right? So there we go. Here. I'm going to scale it down just a touch. How are we looking from this edge? Yep, pull that in. Which leads me to think that this one needs a little bit of a modification as well. Forward and back. That looks a bit more natural. Push it into itself. Almost has like a little bit of a squirt bottle head going on. I can... Let me square up again. Come back. All right, grab all these guys. Skew them over, right? Looking more hammer-like. This face. Actually, do you have a vertex over here that I could grab? Hmm, I do kind of... I, I know how to deal with this, just not in a super effective way. That helps a bit, right? I'm trying to flatten that out. Make it more hammer-like, but not like super hard. It's kind of a kid's toy. All right, so handles looking mighty fine. Hammer head quite acceptable. Actually, let's let's pull that face out just a touch. Come here. There we go. Wider. Yeah. Less likely to to miss. The bigger the hammerhead is. All right, so last piece. Now there is a, a bit of um, a detail that I want to be aware of. When you have symmetry on, you can choose to do them independently, which will split, or you can choose to do them together, which won't split. I'll do the won't split first, right? So I'm selecting both sides. If I hit extrude, it's going to treat this like one piece. Rotate around a little bit, right? So still. One joined body. Ooh, redo that, please. Mm -hmm. um, because I want to split this out the back and give me kind of that two legs, those split pieces. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to extrude one piece, right? And you can see how it splits. This is what would take long in that previous version. I think it's easier to go this route. So, a couple of things I want it to split out. So a way I can do that is, well, I got the extrusion, okay? Then I'm going to modify, scoot it out just a touch, and I have the ability to rotate so it faces outwards, good. And then I can go back to this surface and then extrude it again. Right, there is, there's a, a limitation, right? I can keep on pulling, pull, 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 pull until it looks like just really ridiculously thin. Sometimes that can be, most of the time it's not, but sometimes this can be a you know design aesthetic. In this case, it's not. It doesn't look quite good. Get back in there. And let me change my angle. Right, I want this to curve down. So that's more of a modify. Bring that face, let's grab, oop, there's my taper. Bring this down. I can also rotate the direction it's going. I can grab, I just want this section plus U. I can rotate it so it's more of a natural transition. Bring you down a notch, good. A little touch on the scaling, I know I'm getting particular. And I can take, I know it's in symmetry, so I only have to worry about one side. One more extrusion. See, I can show you how you taper here, right? Taper big, taper small. And I'll go, okay. Not bad. Forms my, yeah, I think I've made some design improvements. 
and just modify this by let me get some vertexes. I want to make some small adjustments. 1, pull that up a touch. How are we looking? Same thing needs to happen here. Right, that's a bit better. Before I quit this, I just want to see if I add some detail. Will it make it look better or worse? I don't want to crease, but I do want to insert an edge down in here to flatten this out. You, you. We'll try three of them. I want you to be... How about there? Right, so now it's a sharper edge. Not totally sharp, but sharper. I think I like that detail. And this is where we're going to stop today. You can go back after we're done with this, so like we finish the form. You can come back. Oh, that's where that guy went. How convenient. Body 2, which is open. Get out of here. Silly. Uh-oh. We can go back and fix that. Ah, so that guy affected some of the stuff up here. It's worth touching on, yeah. All right, go back into editing this. Let's see if we can just save and modify. Bring that back out, soften that up. All right. Just the design detail that I could not ignore. Okay. Are we good? No. All right. Okay, dokie. Okay. Finish form. And this is where we're going to stop today. So make yourself a hammer. Uh, might be good just to walk through this first. And then um, make your own. So good being with y'all. I'll see y'all in about 30 minutes when we kind of check in on a person. But have fun with this. It's one of my favorite kind of toys to play with. And I'll see you in class.